Zach's Screen of the Week, an overview of a timely stock screening strategy aimed at helping you produce more profitable investing results. This week's screen deals with using moving averages to find winning stocks. And Kevin Matris, our top stock screener and head of our research wizard division, is here to shed some light on that concept for us. Sounds like a little bit of technical analysis to me. Absolutely. You know, uh, I wrote about moving averages earlier this year, uh, but I figured now would be a good time to review because so many people on TV and in the newspapers and stuff, everybody's talking about the 200-day moving average and why it's so important. Mm -hmm. So I figured now would be a good time to kind of talk about why these moving averages have such a good deal of importance in the marketplace. Okay. Um, so let me just say that technical analysis, or I should say moving averages, indeed would fall into the technical analysis camp. But the real benefit is that you don't have to be a technician to be able to figure this stuff out. It's very easy and it's very straightforward. But the reason why I think it's so important right now is because, you know, even though the market has moved up nicely over the last couple of months, we have been in a brutal downtrend for a year and a half. And the market seems like it's at an inflection point. The market is either going to bust out and make new highs, start the beginning of its second leg higher, or it's going to hit a wall and turn around. And that's where this 200-day moving average stuff comes into play. There are different types of moving averages, both for long-term and short-term. That is right. Uh, the shorter-term moving averages will give you a shorter-term view of the market, whereas a longer-term moving average will give you a bigger picture view. So, for example, the 200-day moving average, which you see here, mm -hmm. this is a longer-term moving average. And when you see the stock market, and whether it be the, the index or whether it be a stock, when you see it break through the 200-day moving average, on the downside, that would be considered bearish. It usually means that an uptrend is now changing and a new downtrend could be taking place. You can also look at these 200-day moving averages as support levels. So as this chart shows, each time the market hit that 200-day moving average and then bounced up, that has acted as a support. It was like a firm underpinning underneath the market. It almost acts as a moving trend line, if you will. If you look at this chart, just like uh, the, the stock breaking through the 200-day moving average on the downside would be considered bearish, if you were to break through the 200-day moving average on the upside, that indeed would be considered bullish. The idea is that the downtrend is now changing and now a potential uptrend could be taking place. Interesting. Now, the 50-day moving average, that is more of a medium-term moving average. It is much more sensitive than the 200-day moving average, but it works basically the same way. If you look at this chart, you can see that if the 50-day moving average is moving up and the stock is trading above it, that would be considered bullish. And if the 50-day moving average is trending down and the stock is trading below it, that would be considered bearish. Mm -hmm. Then you have the 10 and 20 day moving averages. Those moving averages are much more shorter term moving averages. You can use them individually or you can use them in a crossover manner. Uh, this chart shows that we're doing it as a crossover. And the way you do it is that if the 10 day moving average is trading below the 20 day, in other words, the quicker moving average is trading below the slower moving average, that would be considered bearish. Likewise, if the quicker moving average, 10, is trading above the slower moving average, 20, that would be considered bullish. Now, getting back to the 200-day moving average, the reason why this is important is because right now we are right at this, uh, this position where it could go either way. The NASDAQ is trading nicely above the 200-day. The S&P just poked through there yesterday. And as yesterday this chart... Being June 1st. Yeah, on Monday. And then if you look at the Dow Jones, which is what we have on the chart, you can see it has just touched the underside of the 200-day moving average. Mm -hmm. So what does all of this stuff mean? What it means is this. The market is going to be looking at the indexes to be able to see whether or not this 200-day moving average acts as a resistance level or acts as a support level. If it turns out to be, you know, broken resistance, right, we can pop through there. People are going to look at this, chartists, technicians, skeptics. People are going to look at this as the potential confirmation they need to say, hey, I think the longer-term downtrend is ending, 
And I think a new uptrend is either beginning or I should say continuing, and this could give them the, uh, the courage to be able to get in and try to catch this next leg up. But do you have to actually sit and sift through hundreds of charts in order to spot trends with these averages? You know, a good question. The good thing is that you really don't have to be a chart watcher to do this. Uh, with a screener, you can find stocks that meet your moving average qualifications very quickly and very easily. What's interesting, though, is that whether the, the, the major indexes break through these 200-day moving averages uh, or trade above the 200-day moving averages, that's one thing, but there are plenty of stocks that have broken through their moving averages. They're trading nicely above them right now, and there are more stocks that are breaking through them, both on the upside and the downside, literally, on a daily basis. All right, so if you've created a screen, what are the parameters? Yeah, here we go. Uh, the screen I'm running today, it's pretty simple, but I'm looking for companies where the current price is greater than its short-term moving average, again, 10-day and 20-day. I also want to find companies where the current price is trading above its medium-term moving average, the 50-day. And then I want to make sure these companies are also trading above their long-term moving average, which is the 200-day moving average. To round it out, I want to find stocks that have a ZAX rank of less than or equals to two, strong buys and buys, mm -hmm. and I want to make sure that the 12-month projected growth rate is positive. So again, you want to have the technicals and the fundamentals on your side. Give us some examples. What came through? There's, I got five examples here. A lot of companies met these qualifications, but here's five of them. You've got Equinox, EV3, Martin Transport, Priceline.com, and URS Corp. A lot of different companies, a lot of different industries. They are all trading above their short-term, medium-term, and long-term moving averages. And all of these stocks are in confirmed uptrends and definitely ones to consider watching. Do you own any? Uh, I do not have any of those. <laughs> okay. Get over to Zax.com. Check out the other stocks that came through this week's screen that Kevin has put together for you. And check out uh, maybe text version of what he just explained or go through the archive. There's at least uh, three or four other screens that are archived at the bottom of that uh, page and you can see some of those as well. Zax.com. Scroll down the page till you get to Kevin's picture. Click on the headline next to it. It'll take you right to all of that information. With Kevin Matris and the Screen of the Week, I'm Terry Ruffalo.